uh, between 30 and 60 uh, dunum, uh, thousand quadrat meter, uh, they use a lot of fresh water resources for the irrigation. So this is the, 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 the intention of our side to replace these fresh water resources in a country which is very scarce water resources uh, like Jordan uh, to use the treated wastewater for th these purposes. And uh, additionally to that, we wanted to demonstrate the feasibility of using decentralized wastewater treatment units and reuse methods to reduce fresh water consumption uh, and at the same time to meet the water quality standards to avoid any health problems and any health, any health risks by using this uh, treated wastewater. The implementation steps we started here in Jordan with a baseline assessment and environmental impact assessment. Both uh, uh, were done uh, in between 2012 and 2013. And there we did that very, very carefully. This is very, very important for us to have very detailed, based on assessment regarding all the information which we need uh, from uh, amount of water, the situation there, the geological, geological situation, uh, soil uh, conditions, and all these, these data were collected within this based on assessment. And at the same time, we applied for an environmental impact assessment, a comprehensive Im uh, environmental impact assessment, with the Ministry of the Environment, this took also more time, more than three months time to uh, uh, receive the approval from the Jordanian Ministry of the Environment for us to give us the approval to start the construction of the treatment plant. And we did it, e even the Jor Jordanian law is not asking for a comprehensive uh, EIA, but we did it uh, because this was very important for us to have an example from the beginning which is taking uh, environmental condition in consideration and not harming the environment at the end. And after that, we have selected, based on the baseline assessment, we selected the treatment technology, what we are uh, going to do, and the reuse system also for the treatment plant. Uh, uh, the planning was supported with the stakeholders, so the stakeholder cons consultation, we did several workshops with our stakeholders from the different ministries. To take their, their support and their feedback about what we are planning to do. Then we started the tendering procedure. We select the company and we did the construction, which is uh, finished, uh, was finished um, in June uh, last year. And now what, wha what we are doing is to uh, have some kind of negotiation with the Great Amman Municipality uh, to give part of the treated wastewater also for the uh, Amman Municipality to be used there uh, because there will be, in especially now in winter time, uh, not all the wastewater which we are producing is being used in the PSD, so part can be used uh, in other area in Amman. And at the same time, we constructed also a demonstration garden so that people can visit the treatment plant and can see what we are doing in regards to the irrigation, to the sustainable irrigation uh, system. And uh, finally, at the end, we are planning by March this year to take over the treatment plants to our beneficiary, to our Okay, I will quick, Suzanne, just here. The SBR technology which was selected, uh, as I said, was very important. We were very sure that this within, within this technology, we are going to meet the effluent standard here in Jordan. So this was the main uh, uh, reason why we, choose, why we have chosen the SBR technology. The design parameters of the plants, you can see it here. We have the different uh, parameters like any d domestic wastewater produced here in, in the country. Uh, with this with uh, uh, COD, BOD uh, concentration. And as, as I said, the uh, treatment plant was uh, constructed and finished in June 2014, and this was the opening ceremony, ceremony supported by the Minister of Water and Irrigation and the uh, uh, Chairman and the President of the Security, Public Security Di Directorate, uh, Dr. Atawalba, uh, jointly uh, we did here the opening uh, ceremony and in June. And just to go through uh, very quickly through the, the results which we did. So we have, uh, we, we run a, um, a reuse study to uh, find out uh, what are the investment costs here within this treatment plant and what is the income uh, uh, with when it comes to, to the recovery of this, of this cost uh, through uh, saving of fresh water resources and also at the same time saving that the wastewater pumping from the septic tank in the past by the PSD. And uh, based on this study, we find out that the overcourse per cubic meter is around 1.2 GD per, uh, per cubic meter. And compare that with the cost pumping wastewater, 2.5 GD, and the cost for sewer system connection, 2.5 GD. 
So we didn't here also include the, the, the saving of the freshwater resources. So the, the project, we can see it from the economical point of view, it is a, um, it is a benefit there for, for, for the country, not only to, uh, r to save freshwater resources, but you can make money with, with such uh, decentralized uh, water project. So to come, to come uh, okay, to regarding the parameters, we can see here that the, the effluent standard is fit exactly within the Jordanian standard. We are far below uh, the uh, standards for restricted irrigation here in Jordan. You can see the BOD5 is 8 ppm. We have 8 ppm and the standard, the Jordanian standard asks for 30 ppm. So we are far below and the COD is 45 to, uh, from 100, uh, TSS 14, and the uh, total nitrogen is uh, uh, 43. So we are meeting the effluent standard here in Jordan. Um, just to finalize, so this is my last sli slide, to come to the lessons learned. So we think that uh, for such de decentralized wastewater treatment, we need a long-term process, a long-term policy support from, from the decision makers, from the uh, politician decision maker to enable environment for, de for decentralized sanitation system. And for that, we need more political commitment towards integrated rural development. So this uh, uh, approach should be integrated from the beginning in the master planning of rural de development. We need simplified EIA procedure, relaxed uh, use standards, uh, and not to forget that centralized management need, uh, decentralized system need centralized management. This is very important uh, to, uh, to ensure at the end uh, the operational maintenance. Uh, the capacity of uh, private sector in operation and maintenance need to be supported, upgraded. This is very important, and we need also a manual for operation and maintenance of decentralized sanitation system. This is all from my side, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smail. Uh, we now move to Yana. Um. <coughs> Although Yana has um, her degree in uh, archaeology, she has BSc in archaeology uh, at University of Jordan, but her experience during the past uh, uh, so many years in uh, environment and in project management. Uh, Yana Abu Talib is uh, the deputy director of Amman office of Eco Peace Middle East, and she's leading uh, regional projects within the organization. Uh, Yana will tell us about her project uh, all over, how is it, all across the Jordan, planning for the future. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Suzanne. Good morning, everyone. Sabah al khair. Um, I'm going to be speaking in English, um, so please excuse me. Um, I'll be available later on if there are more information that would uh, need to be uh, answered by you, since Suzanne uh, took most of my time. Um, Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to give a very quick introduction about the uh, organization I work for. Um, the organization is called EcoPeace Middle East. We're an environmental regional organization focusing mainly on shared water resources. We have uh, our main office in Amman, Jordan, but we also have offices in uh, Tel Aviv and Beit Lahem in Palestine. Um, like I said, our primary objective is to uh, protect our shared environmental heritage uh, and uh, uh, the fair distribution of uh, water resources between the uh, countries in the region. Um, since our focus has been since we were established in 1994 is on shared water resources, we've worked mainly on the Dead Sea. Jordan River that are shared between Jordan, Palestine, and Israel. But we've also worked on the mountain aquifer and the coastal aquifers that are shared between Israel and Palestine. We're change oriented. The organization um, tries to be flexible with whatever um, constraints we have, whatever challenges we are facing. Um, what we are trying to do is change the status quo in the region. We know that 
we want to see that instead of being a conflicted region, because we know the Middle East has many conflicts, through w focusing on water management between the countries, we would like to change the status quo from conflict to cooperation over water issues. And that's what we're doing in all the projects that we are conducting on ground. So um, I won't be talking uh, about all our projects, but I will be mainly focusing today on uh, a very important project that we've started in 2012 that is part of the SWIM um, EU-funded projects. Um, it's an NGO master plan to rehabilitate the Jordan River Basin. Um, what we would like to see is that the Jordan River, and here I must indicate that we are focusing on the lower Jordan River, which is shared by Jordan, Israel, and Palestine, and not about the whole Jordan River Basin that also includes Lebanon and Syria. Why? Because simply we don't have any government support from Lebanon and Syria or civil society support. We're trying to change all this, and we hope that as a first step, we'll be able to find civil society organizations um, in Lebanon and Syria so we can include, uh, include the whole basin to work on. Because we all know that if we don't have a comprehensive plan that is shared by all riparian countries, it will not work. But at this time, we're doing with what we have, so we are focusing mainly on the lower Jordan River, um, starting from Lake Tiberias, um, ending at the Dead Sea. With the master plan, we are trying to target Jordanian, Palestinian, and Israeli government officials. What we would like to do is produce a master plan, and we are trying to seek the buy-in from the governments in order to achieve all the interventions that are within the master plan. Why? Because we want our people that are living in the region focusing mainly on the people that are living as riparians um, in the uh, Jordan River Basin uh, to be beneficiaries and to improve their livelihoods. So when we started the process back in 2012, we came together from um, the region, the three offices, and we issued a closed tender bid. We chose together an international company to conduct the study on our behalf. So Royal Huskening, DHV, was chosen to do the study. What, what we first did is together with the consultants, we looked at the situation. So we produced an inception report. Based on the inception report, we produced a baseline report. And from then, from there, um, we did together, uh, uh, because we have partners in the project, uh, it's a consortium of big organizations, our organization as Ecopeace. We have uh, the uh, CIWI and the Global Nature Fund also partnering with us. All each have their parts um, to play um, uh, uh, in planning. In, uh, uh, in drafting the master plan and commenting on it so we, to make sure that we have uh, um, an acceptable plan to, uh, for the people in our countries and uh, uh, to gain the buy-in from our governments. So the first CIWI seminar that we held back in September 2012 in Amman, Jordan, we introduced the inception report to uh, stakeholders from the region and government officials from Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. The second CWE seminar that was held was only um, um, two months ago, back in uh, November 2014, where we produced a draft master plan, a draft regional master plan, including all interventions um, to government officials that are partnering with us from Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. 
there was um, uh, the approach we took in uh, drafting a master plan is we included uh, through public hearings that we held in the three countries all stakeholders involved, meaning we looked into um, uh, different stakeholders from Jordan, from farmers in the valley, from Water Users Association, from the Jordan Valley Authority, that's the authority responsible um, for, the, the, uh, for any water issues in the Jordan Valley. We looked at um, 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 uh, people that are uh, affected in the valley. We brought them together and we introduced the draft master plans to them to get feedback and comments from them so we can uh, together produce um, a draft master plan. Um, during the public hearings, what we did is we, when we introduced the, um, uh, the interventions to the stakeholders, to the people that were present at the public hearings, we had, we not only talked uh, um, and introduced the interventions, we together analyzed and we had criteria to prioritize and together uh, choose what interventions should be done uh, 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 b to start with. So the criteria and the analyzation was based on economic, the economic status in the region. We all know that the three countries have different economic stat uh, status, uh, uh, social statuses, environmental status. It's very different between Jordan, Israel, and Palestine. And of course, the planning and implementation phase of the interventions that are there in the master plan. The master plan is based on strategic objectives. What we try to do together with stakeholders in the region is to prioritize all interventions um, uh, under following the, the criteria or categories you can see um, um, on the screen. So we have interventions related to water management. Um, uh, we have, we produced together with the consultants the WEEP model. We have interventions that are the most important we see in Jordan and Palestine related to pollution control and environmental management. From these interventions, we know that there should be quick and immediate uh, sanitation measures that need to happen in both Jordan and Palestine. We also have interventions that were identified um, related to ecological restoration of the river. How much water needs to go into the river? Where this water is going to come from? Where is this water um, going to be taken out? Agricultural improvements. We also have interventions that talk about all the challenges because we all know that the Jordan River Basin area is uh, agriculture oriented. So the interventions addressed under the agricultural uh, improvement all address the issues that need to be taken into consideration in order to achieve rehabilitation. We also have issues, uh, interventions related to urban infrastructure development, tourism, which is a very important aspect in, our, uh, in the Jordan River Basin, and of course, international cooperation and institutional development. What we are trying to seek is that we see a commission by the three countries that would lead the management of uh, 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 the rehabilitation of the Jordan River. So recently, most recently, we have a draft. I spoke about the last uh, CWE seminar, the CWE conference that we held back in uh, November 2014, where we brought government officials together from the three countries, but also international experts to look at the interventions that were produced as part of the master plan and to give comments and feedback. Um, we will be integrating all the comments and feedback and to, uh, in order to produce a finalized regional master plan that will be uh, presented at, uh, inshallah, a conference that we are planning in May 2015. 
We will be working closely with our governments in the three countries in or for the buy-in of, uh, of the master plan. I must mention here that in Jordan, we really have a very strong relationship with the Jordan Valley Authority. Um, who before we thought of uh, about the idea of uh, conducting a master plan for the rehabilitation had all uh, the necessary data, but it was all scattered data. It was data that was not put together. So by working together with the Jordan Valley Authority, we put all this data on their behalf in one document that will help them carry on uh, the proper management of uh, all um, the uh, interventions and implementations of interventions uh, that I spoke about um, in the master plan. So um, this all can't happen if we don't work together, if we don't focus on cooperation between the three countries. As I said, we can do things alone in Jordan. Israelis can keep on going with their rehabilitation plans because they already, their government has already um, many years back started with uh, master plans for their rehabilitation of their part of the river. Palestinians have no access, no jurisdictions as riparians on the river, but we are always insisting that they must be part of the solution because we believe that Palestinians should receive their fair share of water in the Jordan River and as, ri as riparians to the Jordan River. So hopefully, and there are um, um, uh, good signs because at the last conference we had the three governments come together, discuss um, the plan. They've agreed that uh, to sit together and see how this plan can be finalized and applicable for all three countries. Thank you very much for... Um, yeah. Thank you, Ola. Yana. That was interesting, even though we are both in SWIM project, but this is the first time that I know that this was not just a master plan for water, it's a master plan for more than just water. Tourism, uh, infrastructure, water management, uh, etc. which is uh, good luck. Thank you. Um, so any questions? Uh, um, yes, please. Shukran. Akid la Setiana. في شغلة واحدة نحن بنعتبر نحن أنا من لبنان ونحن بنعتبر إيمان عبد العال من مؤسسة إبراهيم عبد العال للمياه والتنمية المستدامة لبلش باسم 